Hi guys and ladies, our lake is covered with ice, but it's too thin to walk on. So I did a little fishing from the dock. And since many of you watch only for the fishing, let me show one minute of it. And when we come back, we'll make low carb chicken stromboli. I'm gonna make my first cast right here off the dock. I got a big one. Oh. Oh. A massive crappie. I got another. All right, it's a bluegill. Not a bad one. was so lucky to catch any fish from the dock, but this show is about making a stromboli, or you might say a calzone. There are ongoing debates about the difference, but we don't have time for that. You might wonder how stromboli could be made low carb, since it's made out of dough, but I think I hit on a way, so let's get started. The recipe calls for a half a cup of shredded chicken, just a half a cup. So I didn't want to buy a whole chicken and I didn't want to use canned chicken. But look what I found in the store, rotisserie chicken. Looks good. Let's shred it up by hand. That's more like three quarters of a cup, but that's fine. The recipe says I need a half a cup of ham. Well, how do you get a half a cup of ham? You have to dice it. And I found this in the store, already diced. Well, you know me, I'm so lazy. Let's see if we can get in there. How in the world are you supposed to get it out of this thing? I know this looks crazy, but I'm mixing the two meats. Let's put this in the fridge and we'll make our dough. I have here two thirds cup of almond flour and all I'm trying to do is de-lumpify it. The recipe calls for a teaspoon of baking powder. This needed some de-lumpification too. I bought this in 1982. So I have a cup of shredded mozzarella. I'm gonna put it in this bowl, mixing bowl, and I'm gonna microwave this for one minute. Now it says I should stir this. Oh, goodness, what a, look, sticky mess and microwave it 30 more seconds. If I could get it off the fork. It says at this point, all the cheese should be melted. Yeah, but it's sticky. I've got to microwave this 30 more seconds until it appears like fondue. Okay, that was 30 more seconds. It's still gloppy. It's just so gooey. We're supposed to add a tablespoon of butter. And let's melt that in there. Look at this stuff. It's just glue. Elmer's. All right, we're supposed to add an egg. I hope the egg doesn't cook in there. Now in goes two thirds cup of almond flour. Here's our 1982 baking powder. Now let's see what happens. We're supposed to dump this concoction onto wax paper. Uh, oh, it's too sticky. It's goo. I wonder if I could add a little bit of 
almond flour, a little extra. It's starting to look quite a bit more like dough now. Doesn't look very big though. Will this be enough? It came together, I think. Yeah, it's pretty good now. Like Play-Doh. I've got this silk plant made in France. You know, the French are good at cooking. I'm going to try to make this into a big rectangle. Hmm. Oh dear. There's some holes that need patching. You have to have a Stanley measuring tape to do good cooking. <laughs> it's about 13 by 8. Let's put this aside and start on our filling. Look what I have. This is specially imported from Philadelphia. See? That's about three tablespoons of Philadelphia cream cheese, and here's a tablespoon of butter, softened slightly. Here's a half teaspoon of garlic powder. Now, a half teaspoon of ballpark mustard. You could use whatever you like. I'm always afraid of embarrassing noises. Oh, yeah, let's mix this. Now, let's stir in the chicken, ham, and cheese. Oh, I forgot to tell you, the recipe calls for a half a cup of baby Swiss, but we have adults only shredded cheddar, sharp cheddar. Let's give this a good mix. Place spoonfuls down the center of the rectangle, roll into a log. <laughs> it's gonna split in 20 places, I guarantee you. Well, here we go. Well, I have forkfuls. Now this goes in the oven for 25 to 30 minutes on 400. I'm going to check at 20 minutes. Here we go. While our stromboli is baking away in the oven, I need to tell you all, the famous celebrity restaurant and food critic Miss Lulu Cheeks is not coming over for dinner tonight, but that's great news because you know why? She's invited me over to her place tomorrow. And yes, I'm bringing the stromboli dinner with me. This must mean that she's serious about me. It, it has to mean that she loves me. And I'm going to question her tomorrow about her motives. This might be it. Let's check on it. It's been over 22 minutes. Let's see. Oh, it looks good, except it's leaking. It's leaking contents. Oh, dear. I'm going to have just a little slice of this. Mmm. Here's what I'm getting. You could taste the the sharpness of this. This is it must be that that sharp cheddar cheese, but you also get the chicken and it's hammy tasting. It's it's just so good and the crust the crust is flaky. It reminds me of like pot pie crust. It's really really good. I'm shocked. I am shocked. Try this. Mm. Miss Cheeks, oh, oh, I can call you Lulu now. Um, um, thank you so much for inviting me here to your uh, mammoth, magnificent manor house. And um, what did you think of uh, my chicken stromboli with ham and cheese? It had a good blending of the flavors of the, you know all the different cheeses, you know the cream cheese and the cheddar, and the uh, meats, you know the ham and the chicken they, it was all very nicely put together and the crust was out of this world it was so delicate and flaky and crunchy you would never know it was low carb huh no thank no, you no not at all thank you so much miss cheeks i mean lulu uh, miss lulu uh, what conclusion can i draw from your inviting me over to your home today i didn't feel like driving all the way out to your place and I didn't feel like making dinner myself. Oh. Well, thank you for making the salad. 